we find these people. Alright, we just gotta get in, get out, and go home. No fucking around, alright? Is that him? Yeah, so the station filled you in on the situation? Give me the details. They give you the details? Yeah, well they didn't give you everything because I didn't share all the details with them. So essentially what we're working with here is this house was built on a war ground from the Spanish Civil War. And uh, Cortez himself, after he found the Fountain of Youth, he actually took the treasure and hid it approximately right here where I put this torch to mark the spot. So uh, I, I could have, I could have unveiled the, the, the treasure, but I wanted a way to do it where, where it went national. Because uh, this is Sequoia, Sequoia Park News, correct? It is. Yeah. So that's about Thanks as big waiting. of an audience as I could ever want. Thanks uh, for waiting for us. Yeah. So uh, yeah, come in. Uh, now, here's some tea, or maybe at Nature Valley Granola Bar. Uh, I'll pass on that. Thank you, though. Why don't you take a fucking granola bar? I, I'm pretty much going to depict how the filming goes here because you know this is my house and this is my treasure. So if you think that you have your little your little news thing going, that you have your structure and everything, just throw it all out the window because this is this is my this is my time to shine right now, and I, I don't take this lightly. So you know what? I, no, yeah, that's that's a good plan. Let's, right, let's okay. do it that way. Yeah, right, you so know what? This is the, this is all about you. Let's. Alright, so as you can see, this is a map that was written by Cortez, clearly by Cortez in 1532. Uh, what you have here is the house so yeah just film film the house over there so, yeah that's that's the house so that's what they were depicting here in the in the treasure map um so this was done when this was done in 1532 1532 uh cortez 1532 1532 cortez wrote this map um as you can see the notches that sort of shows the number of paces so it's about 20 paces uh 20 paces up and about 50 paces to the right and that X where I've set the torch, if you can film the torch. Yeah, where I very intelligently placed the torch. That's where the, the, that's where the treasure is. And we're going to be digging it up later on. But actually, uh, could you put it on my face so I can talk? Okay, thank you. So, actually, before I unveil the treasure, I just want to give you like sort of a, a uh, sort of an, in, an insight. In Alright, so th this is the torch that is showing where Cortez put the treasure back in 1532, uh, which I, which I uh, went over when I was showing you the map. So essentially, Wait, what, what's that torch over there? Uh, so actually, I'm not going to get to that torch today. Maybe another day you can come back out here and we can have we can do this again. But for now, we're just going to stri stick to the treasure by Cortez uh, from 1532. So when was so, that? So um. Okay, so essentially the way this is going to work is I want to give a little insight to the world as the day-to-day the -day of a treasure hunter, um, especially a, as serious of a treasure hunter as myself. Um, I just want, you know, all the kids out there who think that they can't. So, you know, I, I mentioned that the treasure was put here by Cortez, and I mean, I don't want to be presumptuous or anything, but I am about 99% sure that the Fountain of Youth is hidden I under guess. this. Guess. Hidden under this torch yes. right here is the Fountain of yes. Youth. I know you're ready to get started, but I think you Set up so first. I think if I guess we're gonna get set up. Yeah, so usually I start my morning by getting stretches in. Uh, I call this one the lateral lunge. I uh, usually use this this firm a firm pole or staff that I find on my expositions. Uh, expeditions. 
Uh, so yeah, I usually start with the lateral lunge and then uh, I'll do some high knees, as I like to call them. Um, really loosens up, you know, because the, the work of an archaeologist is it's pretty intense. So you have to be in top physical condition. Um, I'll maybe just get down here so you can see. You can really see the, you know, the muscles that develop for the archaeologist. Uh, okay, yeah. So, you're gonna have to get loose enough because I don't want anyone to get injured. The, as I was telling the cameraman earlier, the, the work of an archaeologist can get, just get pretty physical. So, yeah. you just have to make sure that you're, I mean, you look pretty out of shape, so you're probably gonna wanna get warmed up before we get started here. Um, so, I, I, can, I can show you some of the stuff I usually do. Because, uh, yeah, you probably yeah, have, all right. Let's see that. Yeah, okay, so usually I start with what I call the forward lateral lunge. What's that called um, again? Well, the forward lateral lunge. Say one and more time. The forward lateral lunge, uh, you, what you want to get is a strong staff. A staff that's going to be able to support your weight. So this one probably won't be able to support your weight because you look about, what, 280, 300? Um, so, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, no, that's that's real good. And uh, as you was filming earlier, you know, the work of an archaeologist, you develop some, some lean muscle there. See that? That's lean muscle. That's going to get you through the expeditions. I'll film his cap. That's that's not anything at all. Uh, okay. So actually, there's another one that I didn't show him earlier, but this one is called the uh, the duck hop. Um, we usually, in the in the trade of archaeology, we usually do this one uh, just to make sure that, that our calves and everything are loosened up. Um, yeah. So maybe you want to go ahead right. and find. Could you do that again? Just hop down here. Actually, yeah, I have to do the other leg. So. You're gonna want to maybe go find like a, a metal pole or something. Yeah, yeah. Because this is this is definitely not gonna be. I'm, I'm about you know six five and a built 170, but for you, I mean, I don't even have anything around here that can support that. So maybe just uh maybe just freeform it uh, as we call it. I think he dropped his knife. So one of, one of the perks of one of the perks of being a treasure hunter is, you know, nothing's ever actually lost. Um, I can't remember the last time that I lost something permanently due to the fact that I have a metal detector and a keen sense of, uh, of finding things that don't want to be found. So uh, if you see here, I have my very expensive, very um, high quality Garrett metal detector in my hand, and I'm, I'm going to find go ahead and find my knife. Um, uh, Oh yeah, so there it is, and as you can see, this is this is probably the. Uh, Man, you you probably couldn't be able to find that without the metal detector. No, def definitely not. As 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 he was saying, you couldn't find this without the metal detector. But I just wanted to go over this tool. This is a uh, this is a particularly nice tool for treasure hunting. Um, you got this is called the uh, the this is called the spader. This is when you're in the hole and you've cut your horseshoe shape. Uh, and you, you've actually let me just go ahead and demonstrate that <laughs> so uh, any metal detector worth their worth their weight and, and treasure and gold is going to want to find a nice pair of headphones because this is actually you, you lose a lot when you just use the speaker on a metal detector. see there's a speaker on the back here but you lose a lot you lose that intimate connection between the metal detector and your ears when you don't have the uh, earbuds or earphones in Usually I have a very high quality pair of Beats, Beats by Dre. Um, we're actually sponsored by Beats by Dre. Uh, wait, wait, you're sponsored by I'm sponsored by Beats by Dre. Um, I actually met him in an alley one night when I was at an archeology span conference for people who were searching, searching for the lost treasure of Cortez. 
It was a very, very prestigious conference. I met a lot of people. Um, and yeah, Dre is actually a treasure hunting enthusiast. How long ago was that? That was, that was maybe, maybe two years ago. Um, like, I think I mentioned this before, I've, I've been at this my entire life. So, um, yeah, that was about two years ago. And, you know, we've been, we've been enjoying that, that partnership ever since. I'm also sponsored by Nutri, uh, Nature Grain Granola Bars, Nature Valley Granola Bars. Um, when did that one start? That's, that's actually a recent development. Um, they signed us with their, their peanut butter line of, of granola bars and, uh... Do you like peanut butter? Nah, it's shit. It's... You know, Moses said in the Bible that a man is worth nothing without his staff. And honestly, I, that resonates very well with me. My staff goes with me everywhere. Uh, you saw it when it was with me with, on the stretches. Um, so yeah, I usually keep the staff nearby. You, you don't know who's gonna come and try to take these treasures. I mean, there are a lot of high stakes here. Um, but right now, I'm just gonna go through a basic demonstration. What are you doing now? So, so right now, I'm going through a basic demonstration on how to actually dig up treasure. Because, you know, a lot of people think that it's just an easy task to dig up treasure, but there's actually an art and a technique and a skill level that goes, that goes into it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go through that right now. So, this is, uh, this is a popular spot for the neighbor kids to come and swing on the swings. So a lot of times, you know, pennies and dimes and stuff will fall out of their pockets. And uh, I usually have to act quick if I want to get the loot, so to speak. So Wait, wait. Do you live here? I, I, I do live here. I don't technically live in the house, but I take the garage. And uh, my, mom, my mom, she's actually in there right now. Um, uh, if you guys want to stay for lunch, she's, uh, she, she's actually making something, right? What MOM! Uh, she must be passed out. Um, so, so wait, you live in the garage? So yeah, I, I take the garage. Um, it gets it gets pretty cold in there, but you know, as I stated before, I'm in pretty good physical condition, so that's usually not a problem for me. Uh, if I'm if I'm shivering, you know, I have a strong core, so shivering it really doesn't even phase me. Um, and a lot of times, I shiver night. well into the night. It actually got down to negative 18 the other night. And negative 18? Neg negative 18. But like I said before, I not even a problem for me. Um, negative? Negative 18. <laughs> negative 18. Um, so, but I think we're really getting away from the point here. The point is about treasure hunting and everything that entails. So, yeah, so usually you just, want to, you just want to do a wide, a wide, uh, wide sweep and work your way in, okay? So this is about, what we're working with right here is about 180 degrees, uh, so about a semi-circle. Of, uh, of a sweep here, um, and you know, uh, usually you want to stay away from this here because this is something I ran into a few weeks back when I was looking for the pennies and dimes, like I said, that fall out of the the neighborhood children's pockets when they swing here. Is this is metal? This is this is strong steel, uh, very strong steel mixed with an alloy. Staff fell down. And uh, oh, that's not a problem. It's it's a quality staff, so it should be. Anyway, so you said you take dimes and pennies from kids on the street? Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's, what I kind of think of it like is when, when an artist just does side jobs, you know, like maybe a commercial jingle or something like that. that that's sort of what I view the, the nickel and nickel, dime and penny searching that I do here. This is just sort of my side gig that from funds, children. that fun from children and it funds me for the actual work that I, that I've been doing with Cortez's my, Fountain of Youth. So anyway. So yeah, wide sweeps, about semi-circle, and then you work your way in. And you can't hear it right now, but it's actually, it's off the charts. It is, it is really freaking out on all metrics right now. Um, so I'm closing in on this spot right here. So then I press my pinpoint button. Uh, can you, can you bring the camera over to the metal? Could you bring the camera over the metal? Could you bring the camera over here? So put it on the, put it, put it on the metal, put it, yeah. So see, this is the pinpoint button. That pinpoints the exact location with about a, with about a, uh, an error of maybe plus or minus two inches. So if you press that pinpoint button, you're really closing in on, you're really closing in on where it is. Yeah, the horseshoe. So we, we found the, the location here, we pinpointed it. Now what you're gonna do is you do a horseshoe shape around it. So we did our first cut, our second cut. Those are, those are some high quality cuts there. Um, 
And then essentially what you do is you scoop the shovel in and then peel back that layer of dirt. Peel it back, peel it back, and usually what you'll find is it, 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 so right now it actually didn't do it how it's supposed to, but usually what, it, what it'll do is you'll get a nice piece that you can eventually peel back in. So what, do you think, what do you think went wrong there? Uh, I think honestly it's you guys. Wait, what happened to the knife? Did you take the knife? I didn't take the knife, no. take, Where's the knife? I don't have it. It was right here. Who took the knife? I thought you said you never lose Turn off the fucking camera! <laughs> so I think one of the defining traits of a, of a treasure hunter, um, you know, some might call me Indiana Jones, is the ability to be... Who calls you that? Um, a lot of people. The local neighbors and the middle schoolers that live down the street. They call me Indiana Jones, and I, I, I think that it's a perfect description of who I am. But really what I'm trying to get here at here is that resilience is important. Uh, to everyone out there, you know, when you want to get, when you want to get back up, uh, when you, it's not about how many times you get back up, it's about how many times you get knocked down. And so I just, I just want everyone to know that because that's an important thing to live by. But anyway, so we're going to, all that to say, we're going to move on without the knife. You know, as important of a tool it is for our work here. So we can actually, wait, are you, are you I, saying... did you not interrupt me when I'm talking? Okay, this is my program. If we just get back in the hole, you can see that my my cut in the dirt perfectly um, pinpointed where the knife is. If you could just film in the hole there. So uh, it's actually a, it's a fork. Um, so what, what we have here is a strong uh, silver fork, probably work a lo worth a lot. How old do you think um, that is? I, I'd say this is anywhere from 50 to 70 years old. You can tell by the ridges on the on the neck of the fork here and also by the fact that you know only until the last maybe 50 years did they start having four prongs on the fork uh, most forks actually used to be three pronged so we, what we have here is a four pronged silver fork um, and yeah I'm gonna add this one to the loot because this is a great find now we're gonna go check out my house uh, it's a, a beautiful one room house with uh, brown shingling and an AC unit that also doubles as a heater. That's really important when it gets cold. Like I said, it got to negative 18 the other night. Um, but yeah. Uh, so was this, this is a garage beforehand? This, this is my or mother's really? garage. This is my mother's garage. Um, she actually did all the renovations, you know, because with the treasure hunting, I'm usually too busy to do stuff of that nature. So my mom did all the reservations and honestly, she didn't really do that well. So I've, I've been living with it because I have to, but if I could get maybe Bed Bath & Beyond or the container store to sponsor me, that would be a huge relief. <laughs> so maybe Target could give me a, a warm blanket, uh, maybe a wool or a blend, or honestly, even just a couple of newspapers. Uh, maybe the local, the local station could give me a couple of newspapers that I could just spread out over my body just to keep the warmth in. Uh, maybe something thermal would be better because... Uh, are these yours up so, here? Uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't have a washer or a dryer, so I usually go down to the puddle behind the house that it accumulates in a hole behind the house. Um, I wash my clothes there, I hang them out here, they get very fresh. Uh, actually, what we have here is, this is a nylon. Nylon works really well because my balls sweat a ton when I'm, uh, when I'm hunting for treasure, and it's good to be able to dry it quickly. So, yeah, you say uh, that puddle cleans them pretty well? The puddle cleans it pretty well. Sometimes the mosquitoes, uh, they, they lay a lot of eggs and uh, there's a lot of larvae that accumulates in the puddle. Usually when that happens, I'll just, I'll collect the mosquitoes and I'll collect the larvae and I'll, that'll be breakfast. So, you eat larvae? Uh, I, yeah. I, it's high in protein. It's, uh, it's good for you. I eat, yeah. I guess we're going to see where he lives. This, this has got to be good. Locked us out. So this is my house. Um, there he is. What I have here is a fish tank. I actually found those with my metal detector. Um, I, de I decided to give the fish something nice to see when they're when they're swimming around. Uh, How many fish do the, you have? The fish actually died, but uh, yeah, they actually died. It's probably the I was feeding them a lot of mosquito larvae. That may have been it. I um, but. I'm not an expert in that area. My expert, my expertise is artifacts, ancient artifacts, uh, metal detecting. You know anything that a museum curator would have as their responsibilities. 
So where do you find those artifacts? I actually found those down at the, the, the ditch down this way. Um, they had washed up maybe maybe from a Mayan temple. And it could be anything of that nature. Anything Mayan or uh, anything that was prehistoric Mexico. So seems to be a lot of things just in this one area. Uh, yeah, we have a very rich history here in Denton, Texas. Um, a lot of thing, a lot of artifacts, a lot of oh shit. So what we have here, if you zoom up on it, this is actually a mosquito eater. It, eat mos it eats mosquitoes, which, as you know, I eat mosquitoes. So in a way, we're very similar. But this is gonna be lunch. So I'm gonna I'm gonna. I'm gonna place this over here. This will be lunch. All right. So what do we got here, guys? So what we have here are sort of the the big headers in terms of findings that I've made in my life. Uh, but yeah. So if you Can find you just one, walk through these? yeah. So this is a toy a toy car. I'm I'm gonna date it at about 1930, 1920. Um, as you can see, it's very high quality. It doubles as a as a radio here. So it's actually a radio. A radio car uh, what we have here this is a horseshoe um, yeah there we go and my my recent lover actually used to tie this on my balls uh, with a string a tout a taut string and that's how I would get erections so what we have here is actually a horse bit but this this doubles this doubles as a chastity belt um, when people don't want to have sex with you, they, they say it's a chastity belt, but honestly speaking, I don't think it is a chastity belt. So, Elizabeth, if you're watching, um, I wasn't moving too fast. I just have a lot of pent-up energy and a lot of pent-up sexual energy from the hunts. Um, in a way, digging a hole is a lot like penetrating a vagina. Who's Elizabeth? Elizabeth is my recent lover. Um, how long ago was this? This was, this was, I broke up with her about two days ago. So um, this is recent? Yeah. She, apparently the home said I can't visit her anymore. So I had to cut things off. I had the to break home? it up with her. The, the nursing home that she lives at, Shady Acres. Um, it's for, it's for elderly people, senior living, senior care. They do an excellent job there. Um, Wednesdays is mashed potato night. Tuesdays is taco night. And uh, in a sense it was, <laughs> It was Taco Taco Tuesday in more ways than one, if you know what I mean. So let's get back to the let's get back to the artifacts here. So if you just point it down to the blanket, um, so this is the fork. This is the very very expensive fork that we found earlier. Uh, this is actually a tennis ball. It's an orange tennis ball, probably hit over the fence from the local Texas Women's University uh, golf course that's that's uh, located about a stone's throw away from here. And um, that's my that's my shoe. Um, that's my calf. Just get a, get a good shot of that. The, what size shoe do you wear? Uh, size 13. So fill in the blanks. Um, so yeah, zoom in on this. This is actually one of my bigger finds. That is... Is that a condom? Uh, is that what they, is that what it's called? This is actually a, an old Trojan weapon. Um, the Trojans used to use this back when they were fighting the Spartans. And... Uh, as, as you can see, it's very, very high tech um, in terms of in terms of what they had at the time. Um, they said they said that you could. They said they said some things about this, and they're all really cool things. Uh, let's actually move on. So this this bear, this is actually a plastic bear. Um, I didn't find this with my metal detector, but I really like it. What you'll see there is my my dog actually bit the shit out of this. Um, that, we had to put him down because of this, because I just, I, I loved this bear. You put him down we, because he bit one of your finds? Oh, he's a real asshole, honestly. He kept on coming in here when I was trying to sleep and humping my leg. I mean, honestly, the warmth was nice, but, but I just, I, I got tired of all the jizz. This is a big find here. So what do we have? So this is actually the item, the sole item that led me to, beyond with a reasonable doubt, know for a fact that Cortez hid the fountain of youth under that torch outside. Um, so I guess without further ado, I'll just go ahead and open it up. So what we have here, uh, what we have here, what we what we have here is Cortez's sword. Um, Cortez was known for loving very 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 ridged knives with um, 
very ridged knives with a, a, a black handle. He actually constructed this sword himself. Uh, they say that more Spanish blood was shed with this than all of the Civil War, the Spanish Civil War put together. So that's that's a big number. Kind of. Um, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but that's a big that's a big number. Kind of looks like a steak knife. It's. I can see how someone would not be able to differentiate between the two, uh, but you have to bear in mind that Cortez was very much ahead of his time. As you can see, he used what we would believe to be a big pencil to write this, but that's just how ahead of his time Cortez was. He had big technology before yeah. we discovered it ourselves. So what's the, the rules of treasure hunting over here? Oh, so this is actually something that I'm sort of working on. Uh, it's at, You could think of it as a PhD thesis. Um, it's the rules of treasure hunting. So it's uh, the, the rules of treasure hunting. The first one is, is finders keepers. And as you can see in parentheses, it says, uh, yeah, Denton PD, that's the Denton Police Department. Um, apparently, you can't just go into a cemetery and dig up the coffins and take out uh, precious heirlooms from the bodies. I, I did not know that. Uh, honestly, I still don't agree that that's wrong. And I'm not making any promises that I won't do it again. So the second one is always remember sunscreen. You can replace that with always remember an adventure hat. Um, but the sunscreen, it gets really, really hot out here. Uh, it's a very, very scorching weather here in Denton. Uh, and so you have to make sure that you're taking care of your body. Especially you the especially body as good. I got this from Academy. I got this one from Academy. And it was about $25. $25 on, it was about $25, um, at first my mom didn't want to buy it, but I ended up convincing her, I made a, a good argument, um, when I threatened to just walk out of the store with it. So, the third one is scout out the area to make sure the neighbor kids aren't around, because they really, they really fuck with my work, and they think it's a joke, and honestly, middle school kids are the biggest assholes I've ever met in my life, and... Uh, as, as, I, as I told you before, they, they try to take my spoons, they try to take my, my findings. Um, they said that the Trojan weapon was, a, was a, a, a piece of contraception for sexual intercourse, which I, I don't believe that. They're just stupid kids. They don't know what they're talking about. And the, third, the fourth one is obvious. X marks the spot. And as you can see, I drew an X there. Um, yeah, so this is sort of something that's just in the works. You'll probably see it published in the... A high quality. Um, that's archaeology math. Uh, that's a little. That's a little too uh, high intensity uh, for us right now. I don't think that he would be able to understand it. So we're just gonna we're just gonna go ahead and leave that one for me. All right, Gus. Let's talk about this outfit. I'm liking these boots here. Yeah. Um, what I what I always say is that if you if you got it, flaunt it. Um, and I, I like to wear clothing that really accentuates my the good qualities of my body. Um, which, as you can clearly see, you got a very strong calf muscle right here. Uh, if you'll zoom up, um, you got a very, very sturdy, like almost like a pillar, um, uh, thigh muscle here. So I, I like to wear clothing that accentuates, you know, my good qualities. Um, these are these are actually from the local army surplus. These socks and, and boot combo. Uh, when I'm going through tall grass or uh, treading through high water, through very high water, uh, these come in handy for protecting the lower extremities so that's that's the bottom half uh, and this is where I keep my knife that he stole he has the knife did so, not steal it and you uh, lost it so yeah lost it yeah fuck you uh, what we have here is binoculars when you're having to do some scouting what do you, what do you, and you need those you binoculars see, for well as you can see I, I was looking up at you guys when you were driving up and that's because I have to keep a tight perimeter you know there's a lot of treasure around here there's a lot of High quality, uh, high, high expense items that uh, that are just lying around. I have, to, I have to make sure I keep a tight perimeter. Make sure no one's uh, no one's trying to steal them from me. So, uh, yeah. Do you have any more questions about this? This is a, a this bungee is a, cord. This is a bungee cord. I I use it for grappling trees, grappling uh, tall buildings, castles, stuff of that sort. Uh, Say it works pretty well. It works. It works pretty well. Uh, although, it hasn't really worked that well when I was making up the garage, which, to be honest with you, is the only thing I've used it for at this point, is trying to get it on the roof of the garage. It didn't work. Um, I don't think that it's actually meant for grappling. It's because my, my dog died of breast cancer, 
Um, Did and you it's have something it put that's, down? Uh, so we, we had to put down because of the breast cancer. Um, that's, that's why she was humping my leg all the time. And you because of the breast cancer. You said there was uh, jizz. There, there was jizz. Uh, female? Female, female jizz. Um, you probably haven't experienced this. When you excite a lady, usually she'll excrete, excrete a liquid um, that is sort of her exuding the uh, excitement that you were able to impose upon her. Um, wow. I doubt you've been able to actually fully experience what that means or what that looks like. Adventure is out there for those watching. Let's um, talk about this shirt for a second. So this this is uh, this is my favorite shirt. I wear it every day. I actually have two two prints of this shirt, um, and I, I just uh, rotate them. You know, I have a rotation in terms of laundry with the, the puddle on the line. Um, so it says I, I flex, but I like this shirt. So what, what's that meaning? That's actually hinting at the fact that I'm a very cut guy, you know, like I said before, 6'5", 170. Um, if you zoom in on the... Get a shot of that. Yeah, these are actually biceps. And you, so you got the biceps here, you got the, the, the triceps. If I was to flex, essentially what the shirt is saying, if I was to flex, it would rip the shirt because of the, the vast uh, strength that is put behind these triceps and biceps here. Um, actually get this side too. Um, yeah. The shirt seems to be fine after flexing. Uh, I'm actually not flexing to the full capacity right now. So I guess now is a, a good time to stop and say that we're about maybe a quarter through what I have planned I think, for today. I think we're so actually... So plenty of more... Plenty, yes, of, I think plenty of more things to go over. I think we're actually finished uh, for today. Uh, no, because... Yeah, Gus. No, we, we said at the station that you would do the full story. They said, they said you do the full story. Well, if they, they said they do, this is not the full story. You don't understand. If, if, if you know, the whole thing doesn't get out, then... We've got enough for today. Turn off I the camera. Turn off the fucking camera. I think we've actually... Turn off the fucking camera. Oh, Gus. Turn Gus. off the fucking camera. Listen. Getting a little agitated right now. They said that we would do the Gus. full thing. Hey! Get off! <laughs> Fuck off my property. Alright, well, this is... This is Zach Reed, it's Sequoia News, and well, that went like shit. <laughs> ah! Let's get the fuck out of here. Fuck him.